Welcome back to WatchHollywood.tv and the fifth episode of The Internet's Talk Show. I'm Cassie Cruz and with me is Andy Socker, the founder of The Lavender Effect. You're actually the creative director and the founder of The Lavender Effect, correct? Yes, yes. You probably have more titles um, than that. I, I, you I, many more things. I, I would just classify me as the chief enthusiast. <laughs> Okay. Or evangelist. <laughs> evangelist. Well, let's spin right off onto that. Tell right. us about what is the lavender effect. Sure, sure. In depth, I want to sure, know. Sure, sure. So, well, we are advancing the future of LGBT history, culture, and heritage. And that's kind of a tagline to summarize uh, basically a movement that celebrates and teaches LGBTQ history and culture. And you know how we got to this point, um, how to celebrate who we are as a people, and how to uh, forecast our trajectory as a community of the future. So, so we want to make sure that we document um, everything about our culture that we can possibly document and pass that forward to future generations. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. It is. So. Can you explain to me exactly how you're doing that? Sure. Because that, I mean, that... It's a big goal. That's a huge goal. It encompasses so many different areas, yeah. actually, that you're trying to pass on. I mean, yeah. obviously, that's like the, you know, Italian... You know what I mean? You're like, you're... The, tell me about it. Tell me how you're doing that. Well, um, we're doing it now through an oral history project, which basically is a way of saying that we're videotaping pioneers in the LGBT community that, that somehow helped us get here. These people have tremendous wisdom and they, they understand the context of the times and why we had to fight the way we fought. Um, uh, everybody's celebrating LGBT culture right now but they don't really have perspective as to how we got here. So these oral histories interview our elders, basically, okay. and document their perception of what that history is from their perspective. And believe me... And their change. I mean, because it had to have been... If you're talking about your elders, it had to be different then the way it is now. So they're talking about how they're seeing the shift. Very, very of, different. In the culture. Oh, yeah. So they're there, but they're also describing why they had to fight the way they fought. Because they're the fighters. They were right. on the front line. Definitely. And, and some of them are literally the survivors of an era. You know, you were talking about AIDS and HIV. Right. Well, there's a whole community of people that survived that epidemic, that fought that battle, and that, you know, for all intents and purposes, changed history and the medical profession, so we're documenting them as well in a project that we call Young City at War, which is the stories from West Hollywood uh, about AIDS and HIV from ground zero. So that's one of the oral histories. So you're dealing with that subject mm -hmm. pretty intensely as well. It's one it's of... It's not one of many of the it, stories. It, it, it's, th that's one content thread in the many stories that we have to tell. Right. Well, because that's riddled within that and what that means right. to that community. But like you were saying, it's a really important story. So um, we want to make sure that we capture those, those uh, pivotal moments in our history. And AIDS, HIV was one of them. You know, I personally was living in New York and, uh, in 1985, and I was sure that I was going to die. Why? Because I was gay. If you were gay, you would... You were going to die. You, you were, yeah, it was a death sentence. Everybody called it the gay cancer. And so all of us, many of us just assumed we were going to go. Wow. So that changes a people, you know, that changes a culture. And it defines a culture. So what's critical now is how we document that real story, not from necessarily a narrative perspective, but from a human story, how do we document that and pass it forward? How and how are people seeing your oral histories? What you know, you're you're recording them obviously. Right. And then how how are people actually able to view that? Right. Well the full interviews are about two hours 
and we have uh, written transcripts for those scholars that want to read or watch the whole thing. And then we're posting five minute segments, online kind of highlights of those, uh, those great pioneer stories. And then we have one minute inspirational thoughts that are out there on the web. So we're trying to repurpose this content in a variety of ways to touch a lot of people out there. And it's working. Where, where do they go to get on the internet to find you? Sure, it's uh, thelavendereffect.org and you can see a list of our projects, one of which is the Oral History Project. Oh, wow. And we have all the pioneers listed, wow. and they're fantastic people, and just, it's, it's a little commitment, five minutes, and you learn all about that person. Wow, that, so. that, is, you're, that is amazing. How are you funding this? How are you making this happen? Right. Well, we received uh, a couple grants, uh, one from Wells Fargo and one from the city of West Hollywood uh, to fund the Oral History Project. And then we're getting funds from the city of LA to some extent. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to build uh, a, a big campaign to, to raise more money. We've done a few of the online Indiegogo campaigns, and then they, they went fairly well. But now that people are starting to get to know us, we have a bigger name, and we can ask them to participate as a member of the movement. So we're defining a, a role, a membership role right now. So um, you can either donate uh, on our donate tab, or you can uh, try to get involved. If you have some skill um, as a board member, as an advisor to our organization, we're, we're, we have open call for that. So there's, what's fascinating about doing this work is there's a lot of people that know a lot about our history. Um, the archives here in Southern California are incredible. The One Archives, I think they're the largest gay and lesbian archive in the world. Uh, there's the uh, Mazer Lesbian Archives here, which has a, an amazing collection from a, women's, a woman's perspective, from the uh, feminist perspective. There's the um, Outfest Legacy Project. Uh, there are a lot of private collections that haven't been consolidated. So we'd like to put all of these ultimately um, accessible and readily available to people in a um, heritage center. So that's our ultimate goal. We're documenting people using Steven Spielberg Showa Foundation standards for video history. I used to work for Mr. Spielberg in the mid 90s and I saw Showa form from nothing yeah. and he documented what was it 52,000 Holocaust survivors. Right. And at that point I'm thinking we should have a gay version of this. 